Podcast 230, Wake and Bake the Morning Buzz, Episode 107, Action. All right, fellow slaves here on Earth, my name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stone Roadie, also known in a small circle like Fake Book as the world's most famous roadie ever since the existence of this flat earth and uh yeah i'm gonna be doing a another solo here this morning and uh looks like i'll be doing a solo here for uh um this uh yeah this wednesday morning yeah it's wednesday it's uh october the 9th and it's another wake and bake the morning buzz yes it is and uh yeah it's uh, trying to be have a little uh, happiness in my expression to see this morning but uh it's kind of difficult with all the crap going on you know we got that my co-pilot my normal co-pilot griff he uh he had to take some time off because uh, he's dealing with that uh, trying to stay alive down there. Not, well, not not here this morning, but I think tomorrow morning. He's down there all hunkered up, and uh, man, he's right in the he's right in the middle of that thing. I mean, uh, there he is, right there, uh, uh, right there in Lakeland. He's somewhere around in there. And that's right where it's going to hit. And uh, I just saw this morning it's uh, going to be like a Category 5. But they said it was uh, uh, not going to go north, I heard. Like they suspected it was. It was just going to blow right across the state, right back into the Atlantic Ocean. But it was going to be a Category 4 or 3 the whole way across there. So... Yeah, I have uh, my my second ex-wife lives there in Bradington. I I called I called her last night and uh, see what she was gonna do. And she she's she's already evacuated and uh, went to a hotel. She had she just dealt with that last one. She was in her garage cleaning up and heard there was another hurricane coming and hitting there and she just said heck with it she she's still cleaning up from the last one so lost a car so she went about about a 25 foot elevation or something wherever the highest point she could and found a hotel hopes she can save this car she just had this one a couple weeks so good luck on that but yeah griff he's all hunkered down now Guess he's got him a generator hooked up, and he's planning on losing his electricity here for a few days. I don't know uh, if it won't be a month the way they're talking about what all the devastations that's going across there. And uh, it's funny how Alexa, whatever that app is, if you ask it about uh, uh, Hurricane Melvin, it'll tell you that, uh, yeah, October 24, 24, that was a devastating hurricane that went across Florida. I don't know how they know that already if it hasn't happened yet. It seems to, all this stuff seems pretty peculiar, what's going on. I don't know, but, um, yeah, in that last podcast, I did a solo on Kathy Godsey called me. She said, you sounded a little aggravated on that last podcast you did. I goes, well, God, with all this stuff going on, who who wouldn't be? I mean, it's just uh, kind of crazy. She said, well, you want me to, you know, help while Griff is down? I goes, you know what? No, I says, I, I'm kind of uh, just, I'm challenged to see if I can maybe pull this off by myself, so. I'm just going to make y'all just uh, put up with me and do these solo until Griff comes back. And heck, it might be a couple weeks. I don't know. But uh, I'm not going to let, uh, you know, this uh, administration and all they're doing with this weather manipulation, I'm going to let them uh, 
have their way with the Stone Rodeo show. We're just going to move along like, uh, you know, we ain't going to let them bother us. But, you know, I'm I'm getting a lot. I got one of my comments last week was from the last show was they called me a conspiracy nut because uh, they said all oh, all this stuff is from the heat from the ocean, you know, and that you're just a conspiracy nut, you know. <laughs> you know, I said, and I'm just thinking, you know, there's a there's a lot of smart people these days that says that say if you're not a, conspir- a conspiracy theorist, the uh, uh, these days after all that's been. Uh, going on and stuff if you're not a conspiracy theorist because because you're pretty damn stupid you know so uh so there there you go on that one you know and um yeah i talk about the flat earth but yeah there's a lot of people talking about the flat earth and you know i i don't know if it's flat or not but uh you know i'm kind of open-minded about this that this this kind of stuff but uh a lot of you just all just want to believe anything you've been brainwashed to hear, you know. So, I don't know, but uh, you don't know either. It's just like, uh, you know, a human a human being, you can tell a human being because a human being has the ability to change its mind, you know. Other you know, things like uh, the reptilians, they can't do it because they don't have a soul, you know. And uh, I, I've heard things like, um, "How do you tell if somebody's got a soul?" Is that well, if uh, you need, if you know deep down in your heart that you're not supposed to put a baby in the oven, then you have a soul and and you're a human being. And I don't know. There's a lot of like Rosie O'Donnell. I heard her say, "Not everybody here on Earth these days has a soul." And uh, damn, I, I I'm kind of. Uh, partial to believe in that, you know, kind of tinfoil hat uh, conspiracy too, but uh, I don't know, whatever, that's just me, you know, I got brain damage, you know, so, uh, you know, by the end of this podcast, uh, you know, I've been saying I got brain damage, and, you know, if I haven't convinced you by now, by the end of this one, you know, uh, you'll probably be convinced, you know, so we'll just, (laughs) we'll just, leave it at that but uh yeah i told yeah i think i told you i you know i told kathy Gazi, well thanks for the uh the invitation to help me out but uh, i'm gonna try to do this by myself so you're just gonna have to put up with me for until griff comes back or well kathy said she's gonna do a saturday night special you know she she does co co-pilot the uh stone roadie show uh uh, Saturday night special, and she always does the Halloween special and the New Year's Eve special, and she kind of does the special ones. We have the lovely Kathy Gazi doing those. So, luckily, I got a couple of good co-pilots that you know that'll take over. But I'm I'm just gonna try to fly solo here and see just to see what the heck's going on. But uh, yeah, I got a couple of notes wrote down here. Plus, plus, um, I get on Facebook. You know, I, I kind of am friends with a lot of people on Facebook. I met a lot of people on Facebook. So that's kind of where this whole podcast thing took off from, you know, for me doing these podcast people on fake book want me to write a book and i said man i don't want to write no book and then uh, music explorer magazine they contacted me and said asked me to if i'd do a podcast and i kind of heard about it. i mean you know it's been three years four years ago and i said yeah yeah i'd think about doing that so i said what do i need I, they said oh microphone and a camera is all you need so you know i went and got that and uh then that guy got covid got sick and i was lad griff and i've been friends for a while and i said yeah i was just laughing i said you know i spent a thousand or so dollars on all this stuff and now this guy got sick i said oh well he said he said, well, you know, about, there are a lot of people ask me to ask you questions about this, that, and the other thing. And, and uh, you know, why don't you just let me, you know, 
uh, be your co-host. And I said, well, yeah, I guess we could do that. And that's how it started off, and neither one of us knew anything about doing a podcast, and we just started off and thought we'd do, you know, 10, and maybe we'd figure out what we were doing, and then, and then, uh, and then we never thought we'd even hit 50. Dang, we're at 230, and it's like, uh, yeah, if I don't do one, it's like people are jonesing out like they're addicted to the Stone Roadie show, and uh, it's kind of amusing, but, uh, you know, I'll just uh, take it like that. You know, I get a lot I get uh, a lot, a lot of phone calls and stuff, and I'll, I sit on the phone and talk to people, and it's kind of a kind of interesting how this band Leonard Skinner is just so uh god legendary is that the words that I'm looking for it's uh they just uh you know it's been 50 years since they've been around and it's just like uh um they just don't want to go away you know or whatever but uh I don't know how to word it you know but yeah it's uh pretty special but uh yeah there's just all kind of stuff i talked about that video the guy did from england last on this last one about ronnie being the rowdiest guy ever at rock and roll and i i had some company here and i was just laughing i goes god stuff like this is just gonna make me famous you know so that guy craig reed he actually worked for that band you know so uh that's so that all that's kind of kind of funny but um oh god i got a bunch of questions here but uh i got on fake book like i started to say i think i don't know and uh ask some questions and uh let me see if i got any other notes on here that something's been stuff that's been aggravating me is yes Oh yeah, yeah. About this this hurricane that you know, yeah. They're that the 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 the, the, uh, the left is talking about all the misinformation that's happening with the uh, the help that they 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 supposedly have to say they're giving to them people in North Carolina and the people in North Carolina are kind of saying they 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 you know they're they're not helping they're hindering. Matter of fact, I saw a military helicopter that, uh, you know, they got volunteer sites down there in the military and the, and the, uh, who are the people? F see FEMA. Yeah. Yeah. They said they, they, they're trying to chase these people out of there. Of course, uh, the left say that's a lie, but uh, everybody down there said, you know, yeah, some of them hillbillies beat the hell out of some of them FEMA guys because they were about that back there telling them when they couldn't couldn't do and they beat the hell out of them, sent them packing. So somebody's lying, and um, yeah, old the uh, the hoe, she 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 said she's been trying to get a hold of Governor DeSantis down there in Florida. And she ain't been able to contact him. That's why she's not been doing much. She doesn't know what to do and about this uh, Milton situation because she can't get a hold of the governor. You know, I, I think I think she's lying. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and old Joe, all he can talk about is how Trump wants to start a civil war. You know. I'm not going I'm not worried about being monetized because every time if I if I use one word that's out of out of place they they take away the monetization they took it away last week and you know, I thought I was pretty you know I didn't really say nothing I just you know said a few words and yeah they 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 hit it so I'm not worried about it you know but uh what else you know yeah, i talked about the parasites eating y'all's brain out and oh yeah I, I posted something like that on fake book and uh and they took it off said that was misinformation because it said that ivermectin was uh would uh help with the, the brain the parasites in your body you know i i said that uh that i used um um 
black walnuts and garlic, you know, and they say that's supposed to supposed to get rid of them. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't like to use any any kind of stuff. I I like the uh, uh, hol holistic medicine, you know, the the stuff that grows out of the ground. It seems like that that whole technology is kind of like just gone you know it's it's like the the pharmaceutical industry you know it's said that was uh you know uh old uh folklore or whatever the words i don't know what to use here but that's just old uh foolishness about you know plants and stuff that you use you know this is the <laughs> modern times we need to, you need to use our medicine you don't need to use be using that natural holistic uh, holistic stuff you know so you know the natural things you know like uh, you know even like dandelions you know i i eat dandelions i eat the whole damn dandelion you know and they're, they're not the best thing to just pull out of the ground and eat but they're good for you so you know, I do that, you know, I don't know. Can't they can't hurt, you know, there's worse things. I mean, you know, all this all this food that you people buy, you know, I'm, and I hate to put it like that, but uh you know, if everybody would put quit buying this poison that they you know, they put food in your poison in your food and then they think as long as they put it on the label that you you some of you people won't you know will will say you know well yeah we put it in there and we put it on the label and they know what they're eating and can't they read you know or are they stupid you know I, you know if you quit buying it they'll have to improve what they're selling us you know i mean they can't sell it to other countries because other countries won't won't let the stuff that that you people eat, other countries won't even let them put in the food. You know, I mean, I don't know. Seems like some of you people are, are really hard headed and don't want to learn what the heck's going on. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's why obesity is 30, the 90, 80%, you know, they say. It ain't that high, but I don't know. Every time I go out, at least seven out of ten people I see are fat, and it's mostly women. So I don't know, whatever. But uh, let me see. I guess I'll just move on to the questions because I got quite a few questions here. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, well, a question from last week that I knew was I saw it, but it said. Now, Craig, do you remember what gauge strings that Gary put on, put on, used on his guitar? You know, I've covered that before. They used Dean Markley strings, and they, and, they, and Gary on his Les Paul, Gary only played Fender, so he always used 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, and 46. Now, Alan and Steve, when they played a Stratocaster, they used 9, 11, 13, 16, what, 9, 9, 11, 16, yeah, 9, 11, 16, 26, 36, 42, yeah, that's what they use, 9, 11, 16, 26, 36, 42. 3242. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's early in the morning, man. I'll be up all night. This will be one of them times I'll be, because I, I don't know what I'm doing editing. And Griff normally edits. And uh, by the time I finish this and get it edited, it's going to be, it's going to be six. <laughs> six, yeah, it, it, I, if I get it finished in time, I don't know, I might be late, but I got to get up at six anyways, I got to do something tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, th this morning, I, <laughs> in a few hours, I got to get up at six anyway, so this will be an all-nighter for me, so I've, I've chugged a couple of, couple of pots of coffee trying to wake up to do this i i made a bunch of notes and then i thought i saved them and i was 
doing piddling around and I went back to where I saved him and I lost the whole thing. I had to go back and find everybody's questions and stuff, but uh, I don't know, whatever. Let me take a drink of this coffee here. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me find another background to put up here. Uh, hold on. Well, I'm, uh, let me adjust it there. So I'm up there with them. See, I can usually do this when Griff's talking and then, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to have a lot of dead air when I'm doing these. I'm still trying to learn what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing when I'm doing them by myself. It's kind of easier when I got a co-host or a co-pilot to, to, to hold my hand while I'm actually put these together. You know, hell, I had to make notes and all this stuff, but uh, it's kind of amusing, you know, see if I can... <laughs> see if I can pull one of these off by myself, you know. So Chris, Chris Tinney, Cameron Crowe would be an interesting guest since he's spent time with Leonard Skinner. Slim chance that, you know, them chance, but thank you and Griff for the entertaining, the skin formation. Keep, keep on keeping on and may we, May we not fall off the flat earth. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. May we not fly, fly off the flat earth. Oh, Angela Leonard, our friend Angela Leonard, she said, not a comment. I'm still devastated over Mikey telling the story of Leon. Like the song, but kind of different. I can hardly imagine. My brain can't handle just how badly Leon w was doing, trying to put two and two together. Wasn't Leon fond, found in the motel apparently uh, um, apparent heart attack? I would pray, uh, pray so uh, to be alive after such a horrible uh, injury and living uh such an incredible life chance of changing event uh it makes me grateful to be alive after the fact that cancer has slowly changed my life and still changing and um and i'm fighting and living loving what life god has was blessed me with I have always loved Thumper's bass playing, and I can tell that it's Leonard Skinner playing on the radio for, uh, on my front porch just by that thumping. God bless Leon for his courage and faith in God, not, and for not letting life struggles get get in get him and, and or it did i pray he did he did have uh just a, a heart attack uh, god bless you leon rest in peace and play it pretty free bird <laughs> sorry i had a hard time seeing that but uh yeah it's kind of small <laughs> and my eyes suck. So anyways, uh, Mike Stolings, great podcast, Craig. And when you said you fat fucks uh, uh, keep eating wh whatever you want, I spit my drink of Dr. Pepper seriously across the room. Uh, and one thing, there's uh, those that have complained about not getting the podcast prizes yet. I was I was 79 the first winter. I think it was the end of May. So I have I have been waiting longer than all the rest of you. Keep up the good work. Love everything about the podcast. Well, thank you, Mike. 
Appreciate it. Um, Danny Baring. Uh, thanks for doing the podcast solo today. Uh, the best of luck, Griff and and his to Griff and his family. Yeah, yeah. Griff's like right in that 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 uh, right in the path. You know. Uh, Jim King, stay safe, Griff. Yeah, and that that actually was uh, from a couple days ago. I I kind of missed those. I think last time, so I picked them up there and. Uh, uh, John, John, uh, not Nottingham. Did you ever see Ed, Ed King play with the shell pick? Well, yeah, I, you know, he played with those shell picks, the God, the whole time he was with the, uh, the tribute band starting in 87 and God, he didn't leave until God, what year? 2000. Uh, what year did he leave? <laughs> I don't remember, but yeah, he was with them a few years. Uh, he was with them in 91 and 92. I don't remember when he left exactly, but uh, all that stuff runs together for me. But yeah, I saw him play with those pigs. Uh, Danny Barron, you know, Danny's he's he's our uh, does our intros and our exits to the podcast, so uh. Does a good job. Uh, have you heard anything about Ed King's book coming out? And uh, would Ed's wife ever come on the podcast? No, nah, you know what? I don't think she was. She kind of stays out of the limelight. I don't think she's. Uh, I think we. I think I've asked her, and she said that she wouldn't have nothing to talk about. You know, she'd kind of feel feel kind of silly. You know, coming on and doing a podcast, you know. Uh, I think that's what she said. I think I asked her. I was talking to her for a while. I think that's what she, how re she reacted. Uh, how, uh, Danny Berrigan, how's Griff? Did he evacuate? Good luck, Griff. We're all thinking about you. No, he's, he's hankered, hunkered in down there. He's, you know, he's uh, 20 miles from the, uh, the coast, so he feels like uh, that's the best place for him to be. He said, "If he left, it's you. It's 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 almost impossible to get back home after it's over with. You can't get back back home. So you know, it's kind of, you kind of just hunker down, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this is a bad one. I mean, they he he plans on they're, they 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 they're." They're seriously going to lose their power for probably a week or two. I mean, that's the way the way Alexa is talking. It's it's pretty serious, and 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 apparently she already knows that uh, it was a devastating uh, a hurricane in twenty twenty four, October twenty twenty four, and uh, how how they know it already. It's um, it's beyond me, but apparently they do. Uh, oh yeah, Danny Barron, thanks again for helping me lose 20 pounds so far. Bringing awareness about this, uh, epidemic, uh, epidemic on your podcast. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an epidemic and, you know, that's all I'm trying to do is make, you know, kind of make people trying to, you know, if you're old enough, you can think back and and and, and remember when uh, you know hardly anybody was fat, and now, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, most everybody's fat, and it's it's become kind of a they want to make it normal, you know. And I mean, you're not even allowed if you talk about if you mention it's calling somebody fat is like <laughs> you know. Tell them to go f their self. You know that's what they say. It's the same thing. It's a, one of them f words. <laughs> but it's true. But you know people wouldn't get mad about it if they weren't ashamed to be fat. It's just like I don't guess they're mentally capable of losing weight. I don't know. They just I can't do it. I can't do it. God, I got brain damage. I didn't have a problem with it, but. Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe the maybe there's something to do with the parasites that ate people's brain, and they 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 they, they can't control it. And they, maybe the parasites are maybe they're the parasites that they're putting in the food. Maybe they're going to where you know to the part of your brain that you know controls your uh, your thought pattern or something where you can't do it. You know you're. You know, we're, like I said in the thing, beginning of the podcast, you know, where I saw I saw a post today. It said uh, that you know, everybody lined up to go to work, and it was said something about that had to do something with uh, "Good morning, slaves." You know, like you know, look at everybody going to work, and then, that's what they're trying to do. They're make, trying to make everybody a sla- like a slave, like you know, like it used to be back. In, you know, uh, you know, everybody. Well, everybody ha- is a slave. I mean, you know, I've been all over the world, and you know, probably America. We always thought was the best place to live, but God, I saw in something about Norway that uh, they've they've got like a trillion dollars and there's only 500 I don't, I don't know how many people 500 million people there and they've got like a trillion dollars and I guess that gives everybody two two hundred thousand dollars each you know so uh, you know that's not a lot of money but it's uh, certainly mo- more more than a, most people have these days from what I understand is there's a whole lot of the country that uh, would have a hard time putting two hundred dollars together on on the spot, you know. So uh, apparently, uh, two hundred thousand would do quite a bit, you know. I don't know. It's just, but yeah, that's all they want to do. They go, they want to keep you working. I just I just went to a wake the other day. Uh, somebody I went to school with was eight, 72 years old and died. He, he just, you know, retired a few years ago. And uh, as soon as he retired and moved to Florida, he uh, got got cancer and just recently died. But he yeah, he spent, the, the, just after he retired, he got sick and spent, you know, the whole time that he was supposed to be enjoying the, his golden years, he uh, spent with cancer in pain. So, yeah, life sucks, you know. But uh, it's like, you know, my sister, my sister's right in the path of that uh, that hurricane. And she's 88. And, uh, and her husband's 92. And, uh, you know, of course, of course, neither one of them is fat because, uh, you know, people that are fat don't live that long. You know, I mean, it's it's funny that, um, you know, the, the life expectancy should be getting larger as as, you know, as we get more technically advanced and people get smarter. You think people would live longer, but it seems to be just the, the the contrary but you know it's 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 everybody's brainwashed they just they're everything everything they sell you has got poison in it and that and it only exists here in america your everything your 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 toothpaste has fluoride in it your deodorant has uh aluminum in it the stuff you wash your clothes with i don't know the the chemical names of it, but it's known to be bad. Uh, your your the stuff that they clean, they dry clean your clothes with is poison. It's uh, uh, these yoga pants are made out of recycled plastic, and uh, you know you're supposed to, like I said before, you're supposed to be wear. Uh, either wool or cotton or linen or 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 hemp you know um actually i don't really know if wool's all that good for you but uh but all the this plastic and all this polyester is apparently is uh, apparently your body has some kind of frequencies and this uh plastic doesn't agree with your 
your body frequencies. I don't know. I got brain damage. This is all I, I hear all this stuff, but I don't really understand it. But I, you know, I try to understand it. At least I try, you know, but uh, yeah, I guess that makes me a conspiracy theorist, you know, but uh, yeah, I guess they were talking about the moon one away, talking about another conspiracy, but that wouldn't be a conspiracy if the moon actually went away. But they were talking about where's the moon and it disappeared. And then, I, and then I guess it reappeared. I looked for it uh, yesterday, last night I looked for it. Not last night, the night before I looked for it and uh, didn't see it. But then people said they saw it, but it was, the sun was shining on different parts of it, and it was weird. I don't know what's going on. There's some really strange stuff going on, but uh, I don't know what the heck's going on. But where did I leave off on these questions? Let me see here. Uh oh, Joey Huma. Uh, did you ever meet Shorty Medlock? I saw a couple of interviews uh, with Ricky that uh, he brought Shorty down to the studio where they were recording Street Survivors. Well, um, no. If I did, I don't remember. I don't, I don't really ever remember meeting Shorty. I may have, but I don't remember Ricky bringing Shorty down to the studio. I don't remember that, you know. Uh, maybe you're trying to catch me in a lie because you know he was never there. I don't know, but no, I, um, I don't remember Shorty being there. He may have. I just, you know, there's a lot of things I don't remember. As you know, you know. So, anyways. Uh, Jeremy Murphy at the Hell House. What amp did Gary Allen and Ed use? Also, also at that time, where did the guys go for meals during breaks? Or did they... Did you... Uh... Uh... uh I guess that was, I, I must have edited and bring your lunch. I think that's what that word for is. But no, they didn't bring a lunch. Um, there was no refrigerator out there, no way to keep anything cold that I remember. Um, and uh, no, that and they, they didn't really take a, a break. There was only that little store up there, and they, like we said before, they would take a break and walk up there and get a myrrh and a moon pie, and that was, they were poor, man. They didn't have any money. When they when they were at that, that the hell house, God, when I started with them, we made $3, $5 a day per diem. And that and 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 that and that was when we were going to L.A. to do this the second album, and um, they had just raised, they had just got a raise, uh, just just at that point, uh, from uh, three dollars an hour to five dollars an hour. Before that, they made five three dollars an hour. So no, they didn't. They didn't have too much. Like I said before, but I used my credit card to put fuel in the in the van in the truck uh, to get to the next gig um, at probably at least five shows when we first started out. So um, yeah. So no, we didn't take breaks to go eat or nothing. Everybody was too poor. <laughs> Oh, what kind of amps did they use? Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, back then, God, Gary had a it's a Hell House. That, uh, yeah, that that was before the PV thing. Even they had Marshalls, they had uh, Fender Twins. That Gary had a high watt for a little bit. I think I remember an orange for a little time. They tried all kind of stuff. Uh, Leon used an Ampeg. Um, 
you know, they used, you know, a very variety of stuff. They, they tried to use Fender. They had Fender twins. Actually, they had Fender sixes. Ed had these Fender sixes. And they tried to keep their uh, stage volume down because those Marshalls and the stacks, they never did use a stack. They only used four cause four speakers. And, and, and well, some, uh, we didn't, uh, yeah, I don't really remember if we, they had the, the, the twin, they, they used the mace that had two speakers in it. And then uh, they had the four speakers on the bottom. So, uh, I think we had all six of them. I think all. I think, but we un unplugged up to uh, the top two two heads. I think. I don't remember. I didn't really take care of the amps that much. I I knew how to hook everything up, but I forget. I forget if we if they used six speakers on stage or they had four twelves on the bottom and two 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 twelves on the, in the top head. But I don't remember if we had them plugged in. <laughs> I think we did. But Leon, God, he his rig, he had um, oh those big fifteens. Uh, he had six fifteens and uh, and and uh, eight twelves on one side and four twelves on the other. He had he had quite a bit, but you got to hear the bass. You got to hear the bass and the drums. So, but yeah, um, I guess that answers your question. I don't know. I mean, at least I tried. Uh, hey Craig, I was wondering uh, uh, when you had to go with one of the guests. Uh, the time Ronnie uh, had you take care of the light work, who actually what was it? Uh, I heard it was one of the band members of the Who. <laughs> Is that true? I'm I'm sure everyone would would like to know. It was just somebody in the bar. It certainly wasn't a band member in the Who. Oh God, that that's funny. Uh, yeah, as you as you can see, I didn't I didn't read these. I just copy pasted them and put them over here. And I should have should have made the made the made the typing bigger. My eyes are ah, my eyes aren't good. I'm having a hard time seeing. My eyes are water and stuff. Oh, I got glaucoma and stuff. Oh. So, anyways, uh, let me have a drink of my tea. I'll drink some coffee here. Anyways, the Stone Brody Show bought, brought to you by Wheaties. <laughs> Breakfast the Champions. Uh huh. Uh, Sorry, way I take a little, you know, break here. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting monetized on this one. So, oh poop. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> I probably should cut this all this out. I know you guys don't want to watch me do this. <coughs> Kathy Godsey says she speeds it up when I do these. She goes, you guys are just, I speed it up to talk double speed when I'm getting ready to go to work and then I I, I I can listen to it at double speed you guys are too slow so I guess you can do that and get rid of it and uh, get past this but uh, 
you know, this just makes it more real. I don't want to stop. But, uh, you know, last week I was worried about dead air, but um, I'm not going to worry about it. I ain't going to worry about it. I ain't going to stew about it. Like Captain Penny used to say, you don't worry about it and don't stew about it. You live a whole lot longer. I, I, I live by Captain Penny's rule. <laughs> Most of you don't know who Captain Penny was. He was, he was a, a train engineer that had the Three Stooges on it. <laughs> the Little Rascals, a daytime show like they used to have back in the back in my day. Uh, here in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, I'm not in Cleveland. I'm about 50 miles south of Cleveland. I'm closer to Canton. The Football Hall of Fame. I'm in basically in Akron, Canton area. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, anyways. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I usually take care of this stuff at first, but... Uh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Our friend uh, Chris Eldridge. He, uh, as you can see, he sent in $460 so far... Uh, here on this uh, this year for uh, donations, he sends in sends in fifty seventy five sixty sends it in all the time. He's a real good guitar player, Steve or Chris is, uh, but he sent in fifty bucks, and he said, uh, "Man." Just give this to whoever needs it the most. And uh, Gene Odom, he's having, uh, Griff was just with Gene, and Gene, Gene's having some issues with finance. So we're going to send that 50 to Gene, along with another 950. And uh, we hope, we hope that'll help Gene out. And, uh, but uh, they ain't got that doggone hurricane going through there. And uh, I'm going to have to see where the dang mail. Uh, Griff, went to, <laughs> Griff went to mail something out <clears throat> to our friend <clears throat> who uh, been buying stuff off of Griff. Uh, um pictures that Griff Griff does but uh, yeah he uh, he's been uh, he's the one that sent me the the uh, the uh, drone stuff the drone and the goggles and and all kind of stuff and uh, he's gonna hook me up he's gonna hook me up with a with a camera and I guess now he's been talking to uh, Griff about uh, getting a camera and I was saying, yeah, that one I'm getting off of him is pretty cool. But, uh, I, Griff, Griff, um, uh, said that, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I kind of knew it, but I guess Griff talked to him and I guess he's, he, he's, uh, kind of in this business and he sells these, uh, cameras and the drones and the, the D, the DJI drones and cameras. They got the really cool, all kind of, he's got all kind of electronic stuff, but, uh, yeah, Griff sort of started telling me, we would, uh, you know, start advertising his stuff and, uh, yeah, contact us if you, if you're looking for a deal on a drone or a, a camera, you yeah, know, those are, he's got the, the good stuff, man, you know, so, and, uh, all kind of camera, all kind of, he's, he got phones. He's got all kind of stuff, I guess. Him and you know they have a business, but uh, yeah. So yeah, so uh, that's that, you know. So uh, yeah, 
But uh, yeah, Chris sent in uh, 50 bucks and we're going to send that over to, to Gene. He's having some issues. And uh, oh, yeah, um, Paul Welsh, I guess he just had a stroke. And uh, I guess he's in, in the hospital. I, um, Kathy Keeble, I guess, was talking to her sister, his sister. And she said that, yeah, he just had a, a, a stroke. I don't know if she said another stroke or, or uh, but, uh, yeah, apparently uh, Paul Welsh is back in the hospital. So, uh, yeah, we hope they're, hope he's be, be all right. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, uh, back to these questions. Uh. Oh, also, the uh, CDs uh, with uh, sent to us from uh, Steve Jones, and he got the autograph of uh, Artemis in there for to the Stoned Roadie Show. But the, the, the reason that he got Artemis to do that is because this is what this sells for. However much this sells for, it's going to go to Mark Frank because Artemis and Mark Frank are good buddies. So, uh, so yeah, this will go to Mark Frank. But we've already got a $150 bid on this. Uh, from um, uh, uh, Robert Wheatley, the guy that the, <laughs> the guy that's got the cameras and the drones. Yeah, he uh, he's the one that bought uh, the hat and the guitar from uh, cousin Vigil. So yeah, he's a real cool guy, man. I, I talk to him all the time. I, I have any trouble with operating my drone and the goggles and stuff, and man. He, you know, he he knows all he knows all that stuff, you know. So it's been real cool. Let me move my microphone up here. But uh, yeah, there we go with that. So uh, yeah, you guys were kind of saying, boy, that was okay that you did a. A podcast by yourself, but a half hour is a little bit short. So I'm trying to go through some some uh, <laughs> some questions and be kind of entertaining here. But uh, I noticed on the last one, I was so worried about dead air that I was uh, I don't know, don't seem to have much of a personality or whatever. Or, Seem to be, you know, too concentrating on giving a shit. So, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, oh, uh, yeah, we need that one there. Yeah, boy, I miss America. But, yeah, it's always been corrupt for a long time. But uh, all this stuff's finally coming out. Like I said, if you're not a conspiracy theorist at this point is because you're stupid and I ain't the only one saying that either there's some pretty smart smart people that are saying that you know we all know I'm not one of them but you know I'm I'm open to <laughs> thoughts <laughs> um oh well Carol Locke says though yeah you're you are allowed to jibber jabber if you want to. Hope Griff is out out safely. Yeah, thank you, Carol. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Bolin, did you ever make comments to Big make big to Big Lou about his weight, or is it only something you do behind the keyboard? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, she uses Ronnie's profile picture as her profile picture, so apparently she's ashamed of uh, of what she looks like, so she uses Ronnie Van Zant's profile picture. Why, why else would you use Ronnie? She must, she, you know, she's obviously throwing a spear at my way. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate the comment because you're just proving my comments are true. And now you've identified the fact that you know you're fat and you're ashamed of being fat and you're just throwing a spear at me. But, yeah, I I told Lou that uh, he could, uh, you know, he, he, he needed to lose some weight. But here, dang, Lou... I went down to that uh, thing when I did the Gene Odom movie thing and uh, that I thought they were going to have actors in and I I was acting the fool and and doing those interviews and and telling these stories and then they I thought they were I thought an actor was going to see it and kind of try to portray me and then they they actually used me in the in the movie and I went oh you know whatever you know I don't give a shit but uh, yeah it would have been different if I <laughs> if I'd have known that was actually gonna be a movie I thought I was doing a rehearsal for somebody or whatever I don't know anyways whatever the heck but yeah I used to tell get on but oh no anyways I almost forgot about what I was talking about. I do that a lot. But uh, I was down there, and um, we were at that party down there, and and uh, somebody come up to me, and they go, aren't you going to say hello to me? I said, well, I don't know who the hell you are. And he said, it's Big Lou. And he'd lost 100 and some pounds. I mean, he was thin. <laughs> I went, damn, you look totally different. You know, so I've seen a couple of times since that, but yeah, he's lost, he's lost some weight. He looks good. Yeah, Lou's, the, me, me, I, I love Lou, man. He, he's a cool guy, man, a big Lou, yeah. Known him for long, long, long time. God, yeah, Lou, he, he's good friends of Gary's, man, great fisherman. Boy, he used to bring fish, he'd catch fish and bring them over there to, uh, the studio on a one air dolphin and, 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 and cook it up there. Oh God, that was stuff was good. Cobia. And, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. But Lou, Lou's, Lou's a good fish, man. He used to fish with Gary a lot. You know, him and Tommy George just fish with you know, Gary a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Becky Nykum, uh, seen the Hetty show in MO, I guess that's Minnesota. I don't know what MO is. I asked their sound engineer of 30 years of uh, 30 years. Have you ever heard of you? He had not. I filled him in. Uh, did Leonard Skinner do any shows with Head East? You know, I, uh, I think they were on a bill one time, I think, but I didn't see them. I, I don't really, they're not uh, a band that I would, I was, you know, I was probably doing other stuff and they're just not a band I cared to see, I guess. If I did, I might li listen to a song or two and just, just don't remember, but I think I remember Head East being on a show, but, uh, yeah, if he doesn't know who I am, you know, like I said, I'm not the most famous. I'm only the most famous roadie in the in the whole wide world since the dinosaurs roamed this big, fat, flat earth, just in certain circles. And I guess that's just not one of my circles, you know, so, you know, but he's a roadie, you know, so they, you know, the roadies, roadies don't don't like it i some roadies don't like it that i call myself the most famous roadie ever to exist in the face of the earth since the dawn of time because i don't know why but uh i guess they just don't think i deserve it but 
Um, I don't know. Nobody's ever really directly approached me. No roadies have ever go, kind of said, "Oh, you're you're stupid." You know, uh, they kind of all just say, "Well, whatever, okay." So I just, you know, I if I can get away with it, I I get away with it. I guess I don't know. It's you know, it's kind of cool to claim that title. But I actually claimed that title just kind of by accident because people was once I said, you should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I goes, I was a roadie. And he goes, well, roadies should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, you know, I go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame all the time. So I, I said, well, hell, I'll, I'll, I'll throw, throw them the idea and see what they say, but they they didn't they didn't want no part of roadies in the rock and roll hall of fame but uh so i said well hell if i uh claim the title well, because nobody thought about it or whatever so i said well shit uh, the the it, it don't exist so i i've got to make the whole thing exist before it'll be a thing so i called myself the world's most famous roadie ever in the dawn of time and and you know, I I've 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 uh, put out uh, other roadies that I thought would you know would would qualify. You know, uh, Red Dog, you know, from the Allman Brothers, a long time ago. You know, like I said before, when Ronnie said uh, he was going to make me the first roadie millionaire, I said, "Well, Ronnie, I think Red Dog." kind of achieved that goal he says well you wouldn't mind being the second one would you i goes no i wouldn't mind at all and that was a couple of weeks before the plane crash and um you know he said the same thing to gene odom at, at the same time you know so uh that's kind of like that's kind of why i'm kind of partial to uh to gene because he was ronnie's best friend you know so I'm sure Ronnie would appreciate that I'm, you know, helping out, helping out Gene. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's divine intervention that's making me do it. I don't know. Something's telling me, Craig, give Gene the money. <laughs> so, you know, that's come I'm going to do, you know, so whatever. So anyways, let's, let's uh, move along here. What Did I answer that one? Yeah, I, I think I have answered that one. Uh, let me see. Uh, I did all those. Uh, I did all those. Yeah. Uh, did that one. Oh, let me see. Oh, here's one. Uh, okay, I did that one. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Rob, Rob Tennis. Did you ever find out who the mystery person was on the plane? You know... I was always under the impression that back then, in them days, that uh, they had a cameraman and they had a sound man. And apparently, maybe that was when they first came out with a, well, that was before they had beta machines. I don't know, a, a video. It still doesn't make any sense, but they say there was just a cameraman on there, you know, but maybe they that there was just a cameraman because they were going to add, probably because they were going to add a soundtrack at the end of it, so they didn't need a sound man. I know, I kind of just tried to thought about that. If they were just going to... Uh, they they did it in the, in the uh, Pepsi film for Greece and they probably intended to play music during uh, that and they just needed some uh, film clips and that's probably what it what it was uh, instead of them having a microphone on the airplane 
and they just had a camera and just did it so they would have uh, footage for when they played the music, I guess. So apparently there wasn't a film, uh, a camera, a sound man on the plane. They're, they're saying there was only a video guy, but you know, if it was uh, FBI or CIA or something on there trying to see and if we had drugs and they had an agent on there, they they probably hit it. So I don't know. It's it's, it's <laughs> I don't know. It's it's possible that one was on there. I always thought there would be. You know, it was. You never know when somebody's going to say something that that would be wow. That would have been cool if we'd have had that on tape, but. I don't know. I, I, I would have done it. I'd have had a sound man and a video man, but that's me. I don't know. Well, whatever. Uh, I ain't Pepsi. Um, uh, well, he says, since I can't find any reliable info on it, and it's hardly talked about, how tall was Ronnie... And does his height and uh, and and does the height of his mic stand with his hat represent the his actual height? No, no, it's just that microphone stands kind of short. That that mic stand from uh, those are from England, and they're they're kind of they're not very tall, and they're just about. And just just about up to the top of their thing, but you got to, you got to, you, you know, they slide up and down. So you, you got to have the more of the top part you have in the bottom part, uh, the sturdier it is. <laughs> you tape it. But um, that's the way the old ones was with Ronnie. Now the ones that Johnny uses they make those out of one solid piece of uh, metal or aluminum or whatever. And they make his stands, but those are just one solid piece. But Ronnie's were two piece, so no. But it didn't. Re it didn't represent. Uh, to represent it. Okay, Carolyn Friday. Uh, love you, love your channel. I have a few questions on Gary, who I love. Did, uh, did Gary know how pretty he was? <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe. I don't know. Girl, he thought, girls thought he was cute. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe it's a good question. I don't know. I I think he, I think he, uh, you know, he 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 accepted the uh, the title Prince Charming relatively well. So I guess he kind of thought he was cute. <laughs> Any history or significance to the flower jacket and where they ended up? Boy, I don't know. I guess Dale would have those, you know. Uh, I, you know, yeah. Uh, he he often wore a cross, including on his hats. Do you have any info on his spiritual beliefs or spiritual growth, especially post? crash after he married Dale no I don't know any I don't really know why he had wore the crucifixes um, you know but yeah he he always had the faith shirt and I don't know we I mean Gary were real real close but he never talked religion or um you know, he, I don't know. Um, we never talked about, about it, you know, so if we did, I was high, which is possible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he always wore the cross and had the faith, uh, um, um, shirt on and had the, yeah, had the, 
on his coat, a hat. And, but, uh, yeah, after the crash, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose all of us kind of probably uh, uh, gained a little faith in uh, uh, of some sorts after the crash as to why did some people die and and uh, some people not, especially yourself, you know, because, you know, why does, I don't know. Why did some big people get hurt real bad? Like, you know, Mark, Mark Howard was sitting right next to me, and he, we were in the same seat, so I, we were separated. So, I, you know, it's, you know, he seemed to get hurt a lot worse than I did. I got all my ribs broken and my arm and my foot and I had a massive concussion, you know, and this and that. But I came out of it relatively well, you know. I, You know, that's why I don't take any of the uh, donations that are given. We, You know, we just give it to... I think all of us, you know, that were in the there's like there was like twelve of us survivors at the time we started doing this, but Kenny Peden passed away, so now there's like there's like eleven of us that were on that plane, and so there's six of us that don't uh, don't take any um, any uh, any donation any the donation money. I, we're you know not out of pocket for you know medical expenses so that's kind of the people that are well that is the people that are receiving the money the people that are out of pocket for medical expenses they're still having because of the plane crash you know so it's kind of the, the way it got separated like that but you know but you know we feel it's a good thing you know it's uh certainly helping Certainly helping certain individuals, you know, in my opinion. Uh, okay, where it was? You know, well, where's the cross? The spiritual beliefs? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, thanks again, and I've been watching all of your shows. <laughs> Uh, Brian Gibbons says, uh, Carolyn Friday. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good question. Uh, will you, will you show us, uh, uh Danny, uh, Podesta, will you show us how, uh, how you and Alan string a guitar? Just one string would string would be fine. Well, um, yeah, uh, on the next uh, Saturday night special with Kathy Godsey, we said that I would string a guitar, put one string on on a guitar, and uh, show show how to do a, a roadie rap, how we wrap a, a guitar cable or a mic cable or any kind of cable, how to do a a a, a, a a a reverse wrap, I guess they call it. You know, you wrap it this way, and then you wrap it this way, and then if you can throw it out, it just unravels. You know, I don't know exactly what you call it—a reverse wrap or under over under. I guess is what you call it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show people how to do that, and I'm gonna show people how to do the lock wrap on the. It's what you call it, a lock wrap on the guitar string. And, yeah, I'm just going to do one string when I do it. They're, they're all done the same way, and you know, the same length and, you know, everything. And stretched the same way. And <laughs> yeah, I just do one. So, yeah, there you go on that one. Brian Gibbons, hey, Craig, I heard Gene Odom say Ronnie wants say that Ronnie once told him that he was going to quit and take Alan and Steve and Leon uh, with him, and the rest of them were on their own. Did did you did you ever do you do you ever say anything like that to you? Thanks. Uh, no. No. Uh. Uh. No. Uh. No. Now, he was headed in the direction of uh, country, I think. I think if, 
you know, uh, I don't know what Steve and him would have done. That's, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's something to think about there. They were, they, they probably would have created something that was, uh, uh, <laughs> totally out of this world. I don't know. Something that nobody's ever thought about or, I don't know. That's kind of unusual, but uh, yeah, it's hard to say what those two would have come up with. They was, that was magic, man. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's too bad that happened. It's really too bad about Steve, man. That that really that really bothers me about Steve and Cassie. You know, it's just God. I, it was nice to know Steve, but man, it just sucks that he died so young. You know, and for, it's just. Ugh. He seemed so useless. I mean, him and Kathy Bowes. I mean, God, and she didn't want to get on the plane. I don't want to get on the plane. I don't, you know, I'll ride with the truck. I'll, why she didn't ride with the truck, man? <sighs> you know, and then Kenny Peden said that, you know, he was sitting right next to her. And when the plane went down, she stood, she stood up. She unbuckled her seatbelt and stood up to see where she was at, you know. He said if she would have been sitting on the aisle side where he was sitting, that he she could have looked over and seen up the aisle, but she couldn't see over the seat, so she unbuckled her seat to look over the seat, and that's exactly when the plane started hitting. But we were go, we were hitting pine, we were hitting trees. I mean, I don't know why she would do that. She, you could hear, you know, you, you could hear us hitting trees. It was like. Tush! And then it was a few seconds later, tush, and then it was a, a few seconds later, it was bang, 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 you know. So, gosh, she had to hear us hitting trees. Why would you stand? I don't know. It don't make sense. But, uh, but uh, okay, where was I at? Where in that one? Um, uh, thanks. Oh, and Middletown, uh, oh, and Middletown, uh, Morristown. Okay, yeah, the Morristown, on last time podcast, I said uh, there was a hotel down there, the, the Holiday Inn Express or whatever there in Morristown. It was advertised that the rooms were $139, and there was a guy down there saying, uh, uh, Morristown, Morristown, Tennessee is about 40 miles away from me. Uh, I made a post that what they're doing was raising their rates to $300 a night. And, uh, for those helping the storm damage and the, uh, and those displaced by the storm as a Tennessee and I'm ashamed of them. Yeah, it's, uh. Well, you know, the hoe, apparently her her husband is the main um, uh, stockholder in the company that's trying to, to uh, uh, acquire the uh, mining rights to to the, the 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 lithium mines that they're trying to get. Apparently, the hoe's husband is the main uh, um, stockholder along with, with for, um, oh, God, um, <laughs> those two companies. Oh, God, I'm having, you know. But uh, BlackRock and uh, oh, what was the other one? The other one, whatever the other one is. I'm I'm not going to try to think of it. But, uh, yeah, it just all seems pretty suspicious. But, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a, a conspiracy theorist, you know. Nothing to see here, you know. Just, just ask uh, old Pierre or whatever her name is up there and, you know, she gets, she walked, I saw there today, they were saying that it's kind of crazy that they just uh, allocated so much money to go to the help people in Ukraine, and they're having to try to figure out where to get the money to, uh, to help these people in Tennessee, and she's talking about that, well, we sent 200 million down there, 
this is all misinformation. You know, this is dangerous. This is meant for some misinformation. And, and uh, oh man, they're just, they just lie, you know, but uh, apparently there's a lot of stupid people out there in, in America. I mean, I heard Hillary saying that people were pretty stupid, and I think Camellia said anybody from 18 to 22 was just an idiot. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like I said, y'all are just a bunch of slaves. Well, I, well, I, I have to call myself a slave because if I if 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 I don't act like I'm a slave like the rest of y'all, you know, they'll 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 just come and dispose of me. You know, anybody that. Anybody that shows some resistance, you know, like Mr. T, he's trying to show everybody, you know, how corrupt everything is. But, uh, yeah, yeah, they tried to kill him twice. And I guess JFK, he tried to expose all this and they've killed him. Yeah, it, it's just amazing how the Democrats, every time somebody tries to expose all this stuff, they get they get they get uh, taken care of. You know, uh, you know, there's a certain person in politics. God, she, she's got 57 of her best friends that have committed suicide, you know. But nothing to see here, you know. Uh, that's all just a conspiracy theory, you know. So anyways, well, you know, like I said, any of y'all that uh, were kind of up in the air about uh, my sanity, I hope I... Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm sure I said uh, convinced you, you know. So, anyways, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know how long this is. We've been doing it, but it's it's been more than a half hour. But uh, yeah, that's about uh, that's about all I can do. Uh, you know, uh, I did did my did did what I've been. I, I imagine by the time uh, Griff comes back, maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, get better. Either I'll get better at this, or or we'll just uh, <laughs> lose all our subscribers, you know. But whatever. So uh, yeah. So I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try to add the uh, the, uh, the intro and stuff to this. Griff sent me this stuff, and I. I don't know, I might try to put it in there. I don't know what I'll do. Don't know. I, you know, it's gonna, oh God, I'll probably, <laughs> I hope I can get this out by six. All right, this is uh, another edition of the Solo Stone Roadie Show. And I guess I'll uh, see you Friday. Friday morning for another wake and bake the morning buzz and uh, we're gonna call that a wrap cut <laughs> oh where's that button oh it's way over here okay there we go <laughs> <laughs>